Hello, we hope you're doing well. Welcome back to another episode of CS Canoe. So some quick notes to actually make for the future. I have always timestamped. I can't remember a video. I did not timestamp the description. The story is down below. But a lot of you guys actually watch these episodes on your phone. So from now on, guys, I'm going to try. Or maybe if one of you guys can try in the future, I would greatly appreciate if you guys can maybe comment for other people out there who are on mobile. The timestamps are in the description. So when you're on mobile, you cannot actually click the timestamps in the description. Great job, YouTube. But from now on, guys, I'll also try and comment. I will try and comment myself the timestamps as well, so you guys can jump around. From story to story and also speaking of comments thank you guys who have all left comments this past week or so I cannot reply to every single comment but trust me I do see them and you guys have made some great points in the comments and it definitely influences what I say in the future so thank you guys who all leave comments out there and in the future look for timestamps down below if you are on mobile but first off of course we have many great stories out there the first of which is the most obvious and that of course is Virtus Pro's newest member and that will be former AGO member Snatchy he'll take up the opting role for that Virtus Pro roster and he will of course be replacing Morels. it was most obvious going to be him to be replaced. He was only a stand-in player ever since Snacks left the roster. And a lot of big question marks, though, still going forward for Virtus Pro. Does this answer the overall question of will it be better? No, not at all. We've seen in the past um, a kind of a similar move in this, and that is, of course, we think Snatchy compared to Morels is an obvious better choice. Maybe this is going to be a, a huge benefit to the team. Yes, it probably will be. Definitely in the right direction. Will Apasha Biceps taking the secondary opting role, Snatchy taking over the primary opting role. It should be an obvious improvement, but it's kind of a similar thing we've seen in the past as well. With the team when they first got Mihu to replace Taz, we thought, okay, statistically speaking, Taz obviously not wanting to play for Virtus Pro's roster right now, probably not wanting to play CSGO at all right now before he took his long break from the game. And Mihu was an up and rising star on King when we thought obvious great choice, a move in the right direction, but then we saw really nothing with Virtus Pro. So again, we've seen these moves in the past of Virtus Pro, which makes you think mentally, yes, it's a move in the right direction, but have any results come out of it? Primarily not. But again, I think Morels compared to Taz is probably definitely a bit worse of a player. Nothing against him as well. He's a team stand-in player. He did uh, decently well for them and is doing decently well at IEM Shanghai, I guess you could say, only really because the team themselves are doing decently. But again, moves in the right direction. Will they produce results, though, is the overwhelming big question. Also, currently, though, for all you Virtus Pro fans out there, it's quite obvious at IEM Shanghai. Some lower, I guess you could say, lower-tier teams there. We also have Virtus Pro, though, doing right now pretty uh, fairly well as well. They actually swept five power, although it was kind of a closer series than you might think. On top of that, they also swept Team Hellraiser's Although there's two sides that sweep as well because Hellraiser's actually walks it, had some issues. He's not going to be there, arguably their best player, but their stand-in player, Fej, uh, Fejitz, I can never get his name right, is actually their top fragger, or he was in that series. So two debatable wins there for Virtus Pro. I think still definitely some solid wins for the team, but going forward, Morels has been replaced by Snatchy. Snatchy taking up the opping role, an obvious move in the right direction for the team, but again, will it actually solve the problems? I, I, don't, I just can't see it happening. What do you guys think about that? But also, even more importantly, I love the guy Pasha Biceps, but he continues to make me question with his post. I think we give him a little bit too much leniency because he's such a cool guy. Here was his tweet on screen for all of you when Snatchy was announced, and he said he's now only going to be shooting from the Dragon Lore in his... I don't, I don't know what, anyway, next story. And also another big news out there you might have not seen, we actually had an amazing interview. I wanna see more like this in the future, so Cybersport, if you're watching this, I will link the full article down below. They did an interview with MBK, and it was an amazing in-depth interview. I really encourage you guys to actually go watch it. He did say some very interesting things. After coming forward with HLTV, he apparently has had offers from both North America and Europe. Now, he does actually clarify and say G2 is at offers, so I'm not really sure if these are teams going to G2, or maybe G2 is actually trying to compile some North American or European lineup on themselves. It does seem very likely though that some teams out there have interest in some of these G2 members, that being either MBK or Apex. As of right now though, it seems no one is pulling the trigger. So it seems to me to be a bit debatable if there actually have been offers on the table. Uh, because if there were offers, you'd think he would have taken at least one of them by now if he wanted to go to the major, which makes you think maybe some of the offers were either the teams he didn't want to play for or teams who are not at the major. Because you have to believe by now with his major streak on the line, that's probably the ultimate goal. If there was an offer on the line to actually buy him out and send him to the major, Major, he probably would have taken it by now. So it makes you really question what teams have actually offered G2 at this point in time. So if this actually is a real offer out there, but more importantly as well, it actually goes into a really deep background of MBK's profile. So to give you guys some fun facts about MBK and then move on to other stories out there, he did actually say he would like to play for North America and very keenly worded here as well. I showed it on screen for all of you. He says North America is the most driven region and the region that does not want to play for fame or money, which I thought was interesting. To, to, what do you guys think about that? 
that. I always thought in my own uh, in my own opinion out there, especially with the whole Cloud9 rumors, I think it was about probably six to eight months ago. Remember, it was the Cloud9 roster who apparently was maybe trying, it was only allegations, but of course, they were trying to pull in bigger wages, that, that Cloud9 core roster, and maybe that's why Stewie2K actually left MIBR. I don't know, maybe it's just me. That, that was kind of a keenly worded thing, but also it goes to show you more perspective in the background of these players. He actually shared his first ever salary playing as a CSGO player, which was just over 100 euros per month, which is incredible to see now we've actually grown to. You know, he's actually one of the few pro players out there who, st who started and actually made it this far. He started up as a pro gamer when he was 15 years old, and he was actually being paid just over 100 euros a month, and now we're at salaries that are $20,000 plus a month. It's just kind of shocking to see how much CSGO has grown. I hope he actually finds a team in the future, but who that team will be is a giant question mark. So comment down below, who do you guys think it's going to be? Will it be Cloud9 or any other major teams? I just highly doubt the teams can afford to actually pay Ocelot or actually want to pay Ocelot for MBK or Apex currently right now. And also in very cool news, but also news that kind of just goes to show the current, like, I don't want to say meta, but the current state of Reddit right now. I'm not, I'm not I, I judge any of you guys. I really don't really I, I acknowledge any of the hate out there, but it seems like Reddit has been hateful, more hateful this month than any other month we've seen so far in CSGO's history. We of course had, especially in, the, I guess you could say more so in this year, we had the Sadokist thing. Now we've had Richard Lewis. We've also had Thorn being targeted, maybe even Mega Man. You could also go uh, further and say other people out there like Face it, Mikey, who's now going to stay off Reddit because the Reddit community apparently is very, very vicious. I guess I'm lucky because none of my videos ever get posted to Reddit, and if they were, I'd probably get slammed. So maybe I'm one of the lucky few who get to avoid that. We also had Braxo. Brax, of course, that being swag. He finally took the Twitter to actually tell us a story that many of us, if not all of us, never even knew about, and he actually told us about his little, uh, why I guess he speaks a little bit slower. I wouldn't call it a full-out speech impediment, but he's definitely kind of the guy who you always thought was maybe, uh, like maybe, I guess the allegation of rumors was he's always high the way he was talking, and he went forward and told us because he was actually shot in the head when he was younger, which was out of nowhere, which is insane to say. I'm surprised he never actually told us the full story, so Reddit kind of pissed him off to the point where he felt the need to tell us that, which is kind of just shocking news. And also bouncing off that, we also had Motor2K, the man himself, the, the newly established real Motor2K on Twitter, actually is going to invite this guy, that being Swag, to his house to practice CSGO. That's just always kind of cool to see. And of course, Swag had to ask us what we think about that. Just do it, man. That makes great content and hopefully great practice. And I didn't realize that Motor2K was actually that good at CSGO, but just some cool stories out there. Brax was shot in real life. It, that's crazy. And also, keep your eyes peeled. I was going to actually uh, make this episode or make this part of the episode on Tuesday. If you guys did watch our, our recent uh, Valve updates out there, they did actually promise. Now, I'm not really sure why they make promises anymore because we know they don't often live up to them. That's not, not a dish or anything. I'm just saying they actually did promise us in our last patch updates. Apparently, we're going to have Panorama for All. Panorama enabled permanently for everyone by the start of this month. It is now August 2nd, the point of me recording this. Obviously, August 3rd or 4th by the time you guys watch this. And we still have no Panorama release. So, I'm I'm just kind of waiting patiently uh, and again it's also kind of a scary thing to think about now that panorama or once it actually does a, a launch it's kind of weird to think about every pro tournament out there every gameplay that i've recorded so far will permanently be outdated until i actually record new panorama ui gameplay it's just kind of a crazy thought will you guys miss it i know that when i first when i've last logged on as well with, with the old update i kind of just realized like wow i really love the old layout of, of csgo so much panorama is going to definitely get takes to some getting used to and uh yeah i'm not really sure if i'm ready for the transition i don't play CS go too much anymore, but it's going to be crazy. Hopefully expected by maybe next week early, probably or by our next update. Hopefully Panorama for All is coming sometime soon, as promised by Val. Well, it happened. Right when I was recording, I know a lot of you guys probably got tilted there. You probably were watching that clip thinking, Jake, you're an idiot. It just came out. It did just come out as I was recording this uh, episode. And now I'm kind of sad. I don't, I don't know why. Leave a comment down below. What do you guys think about this? We now, from the future, here on out, by default, we're now stuck in Panorama. That kind of sounds like a, a weird like space story. We are now stuck in panorama but yeah this is this is the future of csgo what do you guys think definitely it takes me getting used to but i'm excited but also i'm sad And wrapping it up here, guys, with two other stories out there as well. We do have nothing taken to Twitter a couple days ago or earlier this week talking about a CSGO course he will release of at least 35 videos on all around aspects of CSGO from, of course, you know, the call making, of course, analyzing every single map and the, the weapon buyouts and so on and so forth. He plans on releasing a full on CSGO course, which kind of instantly reminded me of, if you guys remember, I think it was actually sometime early last year, the whole Boomio rise, as well as we had Fallen. Fallen actually had his own website where he was teaching um, Brazilian players all about CSGO. But remember Boomio? I think 
people like Thorne and all the pro players out there were sponsored by Boomio for a short amount of time and then out of nowhere Boomio went out of business. This kind of reminds me of that but luckily enough it's going to be a CSGO course probably that does a little bit better than Boomio and he said it's not going to be free but it will be very inexpensive. So for all of you guys who are, I guess I guess want to be pro players or be semi pro players or be decent players at CSGO I will definitely promote that when it does come out guys. It sounds like a very cool thing and of course if Jordan's behind it it's probably going to be really a really solid guide. So I cannot wait to see what that course is like. I might even buy it. If I do buy it though I can't showcase it to you guys because that's of course not really uh, much integrity there. So I can't wait to see what that actually is. And very lastly as well guys for today's episode of CSGO News not really too much going on but we are still waiting for updates on the Face and Amiga situation. If you guys did not follow that yesterday we had two uh, I guess one of them a newer Namiga member that was actually Lollipop. He chose to join Team Namiga just earlier this week and also uh, right after he joined some controversy coming out as Face It Mikey did declare apparently it was actually an Amiga teammates that being Lollipop as well as Fast. It was actually Fast who was throwing games to boost uh, that was going to be Lollipop to boost Lollipop into FPL. So apparently as of right now it was actually Fast his Namiga teammate who was throwing games and he was actually throwing games when Brokey was on his team. So as of right now Face It's actually moved Brokey because that game was thrown on purpose. They've actually moved Brokey into FPL. They permanently banned Fast and they're looking into the actual investigations right now. And Amiga though has uh, I guess uh, Lollipop has actually taken to Twitter extensively to explain the situation and apparently Face It Mikey did get a lot of things wrong out there. So I cannot wait to give you guys the full details. I have reached out to Lollipop to actually comment about that. Uh, as of right now we had Face It Mikey making accusations that that Fast, uh, of course an Amiga teammate of Lollipop, was apparently in Min Minsk and he said that the reason why he got he actually left the game, uh, the, he actually left the game with Brokey in it and Brokey with that loss would be kicked out of FPL contention. Um, he actually said his house was struck by lightning which does sound suspicious um, but apparently he got the location wrong. Uh, it's Fast is not from Minsk, he's actually from Pinsk and I probably mispronounced both of those things and they're actually were thunderstorms and rain uh, rain clouds in that city at that day. So we're going to wait for updates on the situation guys. Hopefully Lollipop or Face It Mikey do clarify soon exactly what is going on. It seems a bit sketchy but again Namiga is taking to Twitter quite frequently to actually defend himself here and he might actually deserve that spot in FPL. But as always guys I hope you all enjoyed today's episode of Esports CSGO News. Uh, wrong video. I will hopefully see you guys back here Sunday with some more stories and if not then I'll see you guys Monday. Thank you all for a great week of news and I hope you guys all enjoyed. As always my name is Jake Marmack you and I'll see y'all then. Goodbye guys. Somebody get this man of Viagra because Dick Stacy's gonna have to go hard. He leads the charge to the site.